Hello everybody, welcome back to the workshop. So in this video I'm going to be showing you another easy way of combining two scrolls together. So I've got two scrolls here that I've made in previous videos. If you haven't seen those videos for these particular scrolls, the bean pod or secondary alternative bean pod scroll and the rosette scroll, I highly suggest you watch those. I'll put a link to those up there and I will also put one down in the description. So Whenever you've got two pieces like this that you've worked on and you're trying to join these elements together before welding them onto a much larger piece or a much larger scroll piece, you need to take and be able to forge weld them together. Now, you can obviously just MIG weld these together, stick weld them together, and then hammer out the joint. Most people won't know the difference, but if you ever want to take and win any sort of awards at, say, a blacksmithing event, uh, you're not going to be winning a whole lot of awards if you just plug weld the thing. So, you want to be able to take and freshen up your skills on this. Never mind that. If you'll notice, these scrolls are kind of in a weird angle and a shape. And the reason for that being is I need to be able to have these two bars lay in the fire side by side and get an exact amount of heat where I need it in order to create my weld. I also am not going to be using any flux to take and create these welds or to set this weld. The only time you need to use flux is if the fire is particularly dirty or if you've got an underlap, something or a little bit of an overlap going over the top of another one and there might be a chance to get some dirt down there, then you can throw some flux on there and then that will get that fluxed up and uh, kind of help clear out some of that dirt. Again, flux is not a glue. Flux is a Basically, it is an acid. It takes and eats at the material and eats away the scale or dirt or grime. It will flux out through capillary action. As it eats that and goes and runs off, it will take that scale that is being generated on top of the surface material away and down into the bottom of your firebox. Again, another reason for not overfluxing your piece. So. I've got this gripped with a pair of flat jaw tongs. It's just as simple as that. You need a pair of flat jaw tongs that can hold the thickness of the material that you intend to be welding. These are two 3 8 inch round rods or two 10 mil round rods. And so that's what these jaws have been set up to is to be able to grip 10 mil flat stock. And so therefore they grip just fine. I'm not trying to hold these in the correct orientation because these are round. So all I've got to do is heat it up and just twist it back into the correct orientation. So I'm basically starting with a courtesy bend. So this way I can get the welds like I need to get them. And then I will just rotate the scroll into the position that it needs to be. I've got a tong clip holding tension on this here. So that way I don't have to, and it will hold these two pieces together in the fire. Now to do a weld effectively like this, I'm gonna go ahead and kick on the blower so it's gonna get a little loud here. And I'm gonna do this in real time. Yeah. So to get a weld effectively, it's always good if you have a little bit of wastage material to hold mass or hold heat. So, you know, it's not holding mass, it's holding heat because it has mass, duh, Roy get it out the right way. It's been a long day, fellas. Anyways, so that extra little bit of rod on the end, I'm not gonna use any of that. I just need to take and get a weld for about three inches or so of this material for it to actually get stuck together. And just get this set up to where it can start heating up. And we're gonna bring up all the coke up to a nice welding heat. It is important when you're welding things like this, branching scrolls, is to take and keep your finials that you've spent all this time making this beautiful scroll out of the heart of the fire so they don't burn up. But again, have a little extra mass on the end that you're gonna cut off in order to take and scarf is a really, really nice way of doing it because if you can do that, it will help keep heat in the piece longer or keep the pieces at a welding heat a lot longer. And that will be a lot more beneficial to you. So 
So I'm going to talk here for a minute about. We'll talk for just a second about this welding heat and this fire here. Another thing that you can do well, to get a good weld is to just make sure that you watch your airflow. That is going to inhibit your weld worse than anything. In your fire, this is the last tip I'm going to get, give you before I get to welding this. Your piece will never get any hotter than what your fire is, but you can put more oxygen into the fire at those higher temperatures will burn your piece. So I'm getting my ha hand ready, anvil, my hammer hand ready, ready to go. We are pretty much at a welding heat now. I'm gonna take a quick peek. Yep, we're good to go. Gonna lift straight up out. And perform the weld. We're just gonna make a couple real quick welds there. And then we're gonna put the piece back in the fire. And we get, want to keep bringing that up to a welding heat. So you go in fast, bring it up to a welding heat, come out, reduce the amount of oxygen blowing up through the fire. You pull it out quick, under three seconds, gentlemen, get the weld stuck. Couple seconds later, put it back in the fire. So three or four good hammer blows later, put it back in the fire, bring it up to another welding heat. Once we get this up here, it's almost where it needs to be. Again, for another weld, it's getting pretty hot. Once I make this next weld, then I'm gonna chop it off the bar to the length that I need. We are almost there. I should also mention, I'm not trying to make it look like these two bars aren't together or they're one mended bar because this is going to go on a much larger bar after I'm done. So it's going to have more welds taken in it. Okay, out of the fire. There's still enough heat in that that I can cut it off. So that's what I'm going to do. Cut it off the length I need it. That's about right. And it's giving me a good place that I can scarf. For that next weld. Just like that, they're welded together. So now, Taking this apart here, they're definitely stuck together. Pull off those jaw ends. But this is also what I like to say, these are about, these are what I would consider a light weld. They're just lightly welded together. The reason for that being is I'm going to come back through and I'm going to weld these more solid later on when they're welded to another bar. So I don't have to get them crazy hot right now to do that. So now I'm going to heat the piece back up. I'm going to heat this piece back up and then I'm going to take and bend the scrolls flat. That is also a good test to make sure that you got a good weld. If this doesn't weld, I want to put this out there. If it doesn't weld, you can always go back, put it back together, set it together, hold it well. Make sure the pieces are clean and are not burnt by oxygen. Come back in, bring it up to another welding heat, and make a weld. Don't freak out because it just didn't weld the first time. That won't make no difference whatsoever. So again, these are what I like to call a light weld because they're going to be welded onto a bigger bar. We don't have to do that right now. You guys get the point. But those are welded together. So that's just one other way that you can get branching scrolls to work. 
in your own shop. Let me shut that off and prep that to weld on to yet another larger scroll bar stop. One last tip before I go, since this has been prepared, whatever bar stock you're about to put this to, say these two pieces, you know, they're 3 8 so they're 10 mil inch. Say I'm about to take and whop this onto a piece of 3 quarter or 20 mil flat bar stock by maybe 3 8 10 mil or so thick. I need to upset that piece a little bit so this way it has enough mass that when you weld it up, we won't get any sort of weird shouldering action. We won't get anything where it's got a nice waist in it. It's like fat and then thin and then fat where you made your weld. That's really, really, really important that you um, keep that in mind as you weld this up. As you can see, we didn't do anything to our scrolls and now they're, now they're welded up. They're ready to go onto a much larger piece of bar stock, be forged welded on, and then continue my scroll work. So this project's getting exciting. I hope you guys have been in following along. If you haven't been, you need to go back and watch these videos. Uh, they will greatly help you out here in the future of this channel here at Christ Center Eyeworks. If you'd like to support more educational content like this, a great way for you to do that for free is to take and share this video around with your friends if you found it helpful or informative. And a great way of supporting the channel financially is if you haven't checked out our website lately, blacksmithpdfs.com. It is a great place to go check out to get free templates, uh, all sorts of digital paid digital downloads that help to support what we do here at Christ Center Ironworks. That's it for today. Thank you all so much. God bless you, and we'll catch you on the next one.